Yo, what's going on guys? It's C-Brev. Welcome to the very first episode of What Would Brev Do for MLB The Show 22. If you guys are new to my channel or new to this series, the goal of these videos is to play an entire ranked seasons game from start to finish and talk through everything that's going on in my head in the process. The idea is to give you guys some insight as to what I'm thinking as we play through the ranked game and hopefully help you guys get better at the game. So we're kicking it off right again this year. Uh, this is the squad we're going to be rocking with for this game. It is the No Money Spent team that we have been putting a lot of time into over the first week of the game. Very happy with how it's turned out. We are going to be starting live series Shohei on the bump. Uh, we were lucky enough to pull him out of a pack, so that's pretty awesome. He's going to start for us, and we are going to bat him clean up just because it's him. Uh, normally, Corey Seager bats clean up, but we just flip-flopped him for this. And uh, if you guys want to know how to pitch with Shohei or necessarily why I bat him clean up, I did make a whole video on that uh, last year. So um, all these videos, which this will be the third year that I'm doing this now, um, all the videos since I started the series in MLB 20 are in the same playlist in the description if you ever want to go back and watch any of them. So we're starting off pretty hot this season. We're up to 616. Luckily, haven't lost yet. We had to walk mm -hmm. off our last game. Uh, but we're diving right into it, getting into ranked, and we are facing Gold Scott Casimir, <laughs> which there are tougher pitchers to hit at this point in the year for sure. And we're playing at the old Created Stadium. Uh, normally, Created Stadiums have like max elevation and short fences, so they're slugfests. But this outfield looks gigantic, so maybe this guy's going with the opposite strategy. All right, ready to get underway. Um, in general. When I'm playing and ranked, especially against a pitcher I haven't seen very much, like this Casimir, or uh, an opponent that I don't know very well, I am very patient early on in the game. You'll see me take a lot of even strikes, just so I can figure out what my opponent's trying to do, um, so we can kind of pick up on tendencies as we move throughout the game. So he's starting us off with a fastball up and away, and then a slider low. Pretty typical sequence. We'll see if he comes back with the hard stuff to try to get us into a 1-2 count. And he did. Nice little sinker away. So now we got to protect. We don't really want to swing at any off-speed inside here, so we got to make sure we lay off. And that's pretty typical. The slider inside. So I've laid off it twice. So maybe he goes back to the hard stuff here. A bit of a rocking chair approach. He actually went slider again. Testing me here. Uh, we're definitely sitting fastball now. That's probably what he's throwing. And it was a sinker, and it hits the bag. We hit it right into the shift and get super lucky. Good start. You love to see those. And that's maybe the luckiest hit I've had all year. We'll see if he goes back to the slow stuff since we turned on that. Beautiful. So this guy is doing a very typical early game pitching approach, which I call the rocking chair approach. He's going fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. He's trying to figure out where my bat speed is and what I like to swing at. I should have sent the guy earlier. I didn't realize that was going to get away as much as it did. Luckily, we take second there. Now he could definitely pitch around us as well, so extra patient on this, extra patient on this 2-1 pitch. Extra, extra patient on this 3-1 pitch. He doesn't really have a reason to pitch to us here if he wants to set up the double play. So, <clears throat> Good four-seamer away. Got to protect against the sinker inside here. And we did so. Another typical sequence. People love throwing same hand in his sinkers inside. Since I turned on that, he's going to go off speed away now. Uh, it was inside. But regardless, we figured out the timing. Definitely could have sent Jazz to second base there, too, with how close of a play it would have been at the plate. Um, he'd basically be conceding the run, hitting the cutoff, so we could have safely taken second. That was a misplay by me. And we're off to a hot start. A single, a pass ball, and a single brings him home. And uh, Albert Pujols has been completely insane for me so far this year. Uh, as we take the sinker to dead center, it does seem like the stadium is max elevation. So uh, based on that swing was kind of bad PCI-wise, and we just crushed it. So the three-run lead is not going to hold up by any means. But so far, he's pretty much stuck to this... Uh, rocking chair approach so we're kind of able to just do the opposite like he throws a fastball and now it's probably off speed try to pick up on that there's a nice mix up from him so unfortunately for him he's just trying to feel us out double unfortunately for him Scott Casimir is a tough guy to be throwing in ranked at this point 
Uh, so we got to make sure we take advantage. Slider down the pipe. And now with the shift on, most definitely seeing some sort of sinker inside. And uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get under it. That's exactly the pitch and result he was looking for there. But decent at bat. Would have been better if we swung 2-1, but better to stick to our approach than to deviate just for that one pitch. So slider in off the hands. Probably fastball again here if he stays with it. So fastball sinker, same thing basically. We'll see if he makes any more mix-ups or adjustments moving forward. There was a good one. Back-to-back -back sinkers. He may be picking up on the fact that I don't really like swinging at sinkers early in the count, so he may uh, try to continue to take advantage of that. Did we get all of that with Piazza? We did. I think he tried to bury that curve, and he it accidentally caught the zone. So now this is probably hard stuff, probably a sinker. I'm going to look for it if it's outside because I want to go against the shift. <clears throat> Swung like it was a sinker. Dude, what is this stadium? Okay, I thought that was a home run. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Cody Bellinger triple, though. And that's a pretty typical approach from me against the shift. Uh, definitely try to go the other way as much as I can, and I think this guy's done so already. We didn't even throw a pitch. Maybe. I'm not going to pretend like that was a good swing I just took, but the approach led us to poking it the other way. Suddenly we're off to a four-run lead. He did not put the infield in here, so we're trying to put this ball in play. We are happy with that ground ball, even if it was an out. So let's talk about that situational hitting. Uh, runner on third, one out, and he didn't put the infield in. So, wow, there's a lot going on right now, especially with Reynolds up. So let me pause. So situational hitting, runner on third, one out. He did not put the infield in. What that means is even if we hit a routine ground ball at someone, the only play is going to be to first base for the out. So that is a run. So instead of being patient in that at bat like we typically were this whole game so far, uh, we were hyper aggressive because we want to put the ball in play. Like I said, even if that ground ball I hit was at someone, still would have made it 5 nothing game. It just would have made an out as well. Uh, so that's why we turned it around there in the Evan Longoria bat. And now with Brian Reynolds as well, we want to continue to be hyper aggressive with our 8-hole hitter here. We do have a runner on base, which means a home run. Would be worth two runs. A double's going to score him, most likely, with how big this outfield is. And we have the pitcher on deck. So uh, we got to try to take advantage of this Brian Reynolds at bat um, and try to get this runner moved up or in as best as we can since we are vulnerable with our next hitter. The inning's probably over um, if we do not come through with Brian Reynolds here. So we're looking for probably sinkers in the zone, and we're being pretty aggressive. And we do poke it the other way. <clears throat> Unfortunately, for just a single, man, this is great gameplay for situational hitting, though. So now we've got our pitcher up. Just kidding. <laughs> Everything I said. <laughs> Everything I said doesn't matter because I forgot I was throwing Otani. How embarrassing. Jeez. All right, well, if our pitcher was up there, we would have struck out on purpose. And uh, instead... We go after it with Seager and pop up. That was a pretty good swing idea, honestly. We just didn't hit it with our PCI. Again with the rocking chair. Down 0-2 now. Sinker would be kind of weird. I, I think he might double up on the off speed. We'll see what he does. He did. We poke it the other way. Base is loaded. Can't send the runner because we'll be out. So now we're looking at bases juice with Jazz. And we're almost certainly getting a sinker inside first pitch. So we are turning and burning. I missed. <laughs> the high slider. Good mix up from him. Honestly, there was so much going on that first inning. I'm happy we just scored five. And uh, I'm glad I was able to talk about the pitcher situational hitting, even though I completely forgot that Shohei was batting cleanup for me. So on to the mound now. We are actually going to mimic his approach pretty well. It's not a bad approach by any means. We just kind of had a good first inning. Uh, we're trying to figure out where our opponent's bat speed is at as well. So we're going to do a little rocking chair, a little fast slow, and figure out what he likes and doesn't like. So he had good timing on the splitter, so we'll go back to the fast stuff here. See if he likes it. Didn't really like that one, so let's double up. Just trying to feel him out, and he is late. So it does seem like with his bat speed where we're at, uh, the fastballs are going to be an issue for him. So we'll triple up here, and we blow it right by him. So we've already 
two at bats into the game exposed a weakness of our opponent and so now the little mini game is going to be can we catch him when he's making the adjustment so i went first pitch splitter there in a fastball tunnel just in case he was sitting on the fastball we'll try to bury a slider just to see if we can catch him and he does chase as well 0-2 based on that first at bat we probably have to go up and in fastball here but if he turns that's sad he was still late. So like I said, this is just mind games now of when is he going to turn it around and fix the fact that he's late on these fastballs. And it was not on that pitch. I tried to throw it away there just in case he like guessed and swung super early like that. Um, he would have been early on it instead of good if I threw it inside. And that was hung. <clears throat> so his bat speed has sped up a little bit now. So he's trying to make the adjustment. So we are going to bury a splitter 0-2 just to see if he bites. And he does. So he bailed us out there with that swing. Luckily he bit. I wasn't expecting him to swing there. But we take the out. And uh, the game for him with me on the mound is going to be, you know, correcting the fact that he's behind on the fastball so far. Because we are definitely going to try to exploit that, especially with some someone like Shohei who throws really hard. O2 here, o here with Pujols. Does he triple up on the hard stuff? He did go off speed. So again, we got to be really conscious of sliders inside. If it's an inside tunnel, I'll probably just take it, even if he locks me up with a sinker or something. So like that, if it was a slider, I would have chased. So we got to let him paint us at least once. Great pitch from him. Now that he's shown us he will, we'll be a little bit more aggressive. Slider away, probably sinker inside now. Got to make sure it's in the strike zone. I don't want to chase on it. He went away with it. Seemed like he missed his spot, so we'll see if he doubles up. Tries it again. It was a slider right down the pipe. Missed it with our PCI again. But it is a Shohei double. And now we probably want to be pretty aggressive. This is almost certainly a sinker. He's been loving them first pitch sinkers. And we got a runner in scoring position. Unfortunately, he threw it for a ball. So we definitely guessed there. That was unfortunate he threw it for a ball. I know for sure he wasn't trying to. Um, if that was a strike, we would have been all over it. Just trying to get that runner in from second base. Take advantage of the tendencies. Unfortunately for us, he threw it about four inches off the plate. <clears throat> so now, obviously a base hit's going to score the run. And I don't really know what I'm looking for. Maybe some off speed. Something like that. Crush the first base. Unfortunately, we do not score that inning. But a good inning all around. Really, the Piazza at bat was a bit unfortunate. Could have been a lot different if he put the ball in the zone there. But uh, what can you do? Good stopgap inning from him, though. Kind of stemmed the bleeding a little bit, not let us get too far ahead. And you can see he's way out in front. That's why we tested him with the first pitch cutter. See if we can get him to chase the splitter again. Definitely wanted that lower. Had an early release, so it ended up higher. And uh, let's try this cutter down and in again, just to see if his bat is super fast. And he did sit back on it. So now we'll come around. We'll go right back to the gas, and if he guesses right, then he guesses right. He was late. Beautiful. So you can see how we're manipulating his bat speed. Um, as soon as we figured out he is going to struggle to hit the fastball unless he kind of sits on it, then we started pounding fastballs, and then when he's trying to make the adjustment to speed his bat up, now we're messing with him with mixing in the cutters and the splitters and keeping him off balance for sure. I think this isn't a bat where we try to assert dominance and just throw fastballs relentlessly especially with a five run lead and a bat like this is going to help us set up uh set up some sequencing later on so this is a small tip i do as well if i triple up on a pitch i try to just hold the ball a little bit longer on the third pitch for some reason it subconsciously implies that you're not throwing the same pitch i don't know why we're like this but i find it to be very effective so the triple fastball inside we get him swinging way late for an easy fly out and now he's got Jimmy Rollins who's hitting 077 so when I see something like this guy with good top good contact good speed 
uh, not a high batting average. I'm definitely going to bunt defense. So I like to go to bunt defense, and then I can press triangle or Y uh, to bring up the defensive positioning. Then I can go to my second baseman and put him in as well. So this is my typical bunt defense here. I don't want to give this guy any freebies <clears throat> with how hard it's been for him to generate offense so far this game and the fact that he's clearly been struggling with Jimmy uh, since he's been using him. So because I know the bunt is in play, we're just going to take it away from him. And if he pokes one through this infield that's basically in, then it is what it is. Let's try the backdoor cutter here. You can see his bat's super fast again. So we are just playing the mind games. Definitely a guy who, like I said, is struggling to hit the heat without guessing. So we just got to guess before he guesses. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. So again, first pitch sinker. This has been pretty typical from our opponent. So this is why it's important to pick up on sequencing. Um, same exact thing with Piazza, but he threw it where he wanted it to that time. And that's definitely a pitch we want to sit on with Longoria with the shift on because just like I did, it's an incredibly easy pitch to take the other way against the shift. was an easy double, and we get another pass ball. Same concept here with Brian Reynolds, although we got a little bit more outs to work with. Uh, same concept that we had earlier in the game where putting the ball in play even on the ground is going to be a run here because he still doesn't have the infield in. If I was him, I might consider infield in here just so this game doesn't get too far away. Um, but he is leaving him back, so that's good news for us. As long as we make contact, most likely we're going to be up 6 nothing. He could walk us here as well. Does not have to come in the zone at all. And we get extremely lucky there. Beautiful pitch by him. And uh, he may have exposed one of our weaknesses so far, so we'll have to keep that in mind. That's the second time he went up and into a righty, and it was bad result from us or a bad swing from us so the first time was with poo holes where we took it for strike three that time it was a front door sinker and we swung late and we got super lucky um so i imagine he'll try to attack me up and in with a righty with two strikes again at some point if we get that far good take there he's gotta go sinker inside here he needs to double play really badly oh he did it with a lefty okay so <laughs> So we have, we're now basically 0 for 3 on pitches up and in, so we have to be extremely aware of that and compensate again because he's definitely looking to exploit that from here on out. So we got to turn and burn on it one time just to get him off of that. Um, he's only really done it with two strikes, so I'm going to look for it here. Um, hopefully he doesn't throw the slider in. Luckily that was a curve. I almost swung. Got to sit up and in here. We can't let him beat us again. He went up and away. I don't know if that was a misfire or intentional. But our bat is super fast. We're not going to get beat up here for the fourth time. Oh, no. <laughs> I was too ready. All right. This is off speed now. There's no shot he's throwing that again. It wasn't off speed. He went away. So whenever you crank one foul like that, they're almost certainly not doubling up. So... That's why we slowed our bat down again. There's the off speed. Rib it down the line with Buxton's speed. We're going to have second and third. And again, if he does not put the infield in here, we are hyper aggressive, even left on left, because the ground ball is going to make this game 7-0. to zero. So we are definitely trying to put the ball in play. You can even consider contact swinging in a spot like this if you really wanted to. Foul ball, I don't think he's going to get there. So we are not patient at all this at bat. We want the ball in play. Even something like that is good with the speed we have. He should throw to third here. He uh, got a little bit too behind the ball, man. <laughs> Feels bad, dude. Oh, that's tough. He did throw to third. That was the right play. He just didn't. He was trying to get behind the ball so he could get a better throw. That's very unfortunate. I kind of feel bad. 0-2 to poo holes now. I don't know how he fouled that. Terrible at bat so far. Does he go up and in again? He went a slider inside. That's going to make it 10 nothing, I think. Is that fair? It was fair. 10 nothing, And he's donezo. So even though that game was short, 
And I don't mean these, I never mean these videos to be like a flex, by the way. Like, I understand my opponent was throwing Scott Casimir, uh, and that's a tough spot to be in. But the point of the videos is to give you guys the information. Um, a lot of good situational hitting stuff we went over, assuming we had a normal pitcher in the game. Uh, so just pretend Corey Seager was a pitcher when I was talking about that stuff earlier. But um, I hope it was helpful. Kind of a good starter episode for this series. Definitely want to be pumping out a lot of these this year. So if you have any questions or any concerns about the video, please feel free to drop them below. Uh, like the video. That helps me out. Sub if you want to see more content like this. I will have a series of hitting tips and pitching tips videos coming out as well. Um, they're just taking a lot of time to get right. So they're not out yet, but they will be. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Hope you learned something. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.